In this episode of Tom's World Scale Model Series, we look at the classic Tamiya 135th scale Kuba Wagon Type 82. Feel free to comment below the video, like, dislike, or click the notification button for alerts when new videos in this series are posted. Or mosey on down to the channel Tom's World for a complete list of all of our entertaining videos. The Kuba Wagon, Germany's equivalent to America's Willys Jeep, served in all theaters of war within all German units that fought in World War II. From the scorched sands of North Africa to the frozen steppes of Russia, from the French Low Country to the rugged peninsula of Italy. This light military transport mainstay served with distinction alongside its German units throughout the war. This Timia kit is pure model nostalgia. This little jalopy has adorned many a scale model collection around the world for decades. Fitting therefore that we inaugurate our series with this classic kit. So stay with us for this detailed kit review and construction of Timia's Kubelwagen Type 82. So welcome, welcome to Tom's World Scale Model Series. So it finally arrived at what was a prolonged trip across the Pacific Ocean, probably in some cargo hold of some ship. And uh, you know, based on the time it took to get here, it was probably like a steamship, but that aside. And it was disappointing in that the box was totally crushed and it came with no shrink wrap. So it always makes opening the box an adventure because you got to wonder whether there's something going to be broken or missing. Um, normally, if this went through the retail um, route, uh, if no shrink wrap would indicate it was a probably return. So I don't really know what the condition of what is inside there. Now, I've looked before, of course, but we'll leave it for a surprise in a moment. So there it is, uh, kit 35213. Uh, the molds inside do uh, date back from 1997, so it's been around a little while. And I paid all in $25 right to my door. You can find it probably a little bit cheaper at club swaps or competitions and the like. Uh, but I did stick it in a new box, obviously, because I wanted to doll it up for its big premium. Here, that other box was just pathetic, so this is not the way it came, but this is normally the way you'll find it. So tiny little box of course it's a tiny little vehicle uh, let's see here box measures six and a quarter by 16 centimeters uh, let's see here ten and a quarter inches by 26 centimeters and a paltry one and a half inches and four centimeters tall and if you're using equipment comparable to mine i'm shooting well you know my setup here's got a 24 inch panel 1920 by 1080 and I'm not bragging or anything, but under those conditions, this box will actually appear just about one to one. So that gives you some idea of the scale. Fairly typical to me a box art, although recently and in the past they've departed, they've had full color tops, but normally it is a white box with an isolated hand painted uh, subject matter. Uh, the box art's always fantastic quality, as is the case here. It looks like it is hand painted. Uh, typical Dunkelgelb layout with uh, Dunkelgrün patterning on the side wartime scheme very typical and normally what's depicted on the box is what's in the box so if they do show a crewman or a soldier or sometimes animals or ancillary equipment that's normally what's inside the box but you can always check the text here and it'll tell you what's inside a lifelike figure okay well i'll be the judge of that so there it is uh, with the Tamiya logo, of course, emblazoned on the side. Let's have a look at the other sides of the box. Now I'm going to have to manually focus this, guys. So just stick with me here. My autofocus is not the greatest. There we go. So on this side, uh, the tricolor classic German scheme depicted. And that is the only reference you're going to get to that uh, tricolor scheme. It's not depicted on the instructions. Now it's really tempting because I really do like that scheme, but since most of my German vehicles end up being that scheme, I want to try something a little bit different and challenging. And that'll take us to this side of the box, and they're calling this the monotone scheme, which is that German gray uh, color. And that's the one I think we're going to tackle. Uh, it's got that khaki roof color. And of course, the monotone schemes are always, you know, tough to make the paint look interesting. So I think that's going to be the challenge here. Plus, I've already got one on my shelf that's in Dunkel Gelb, which I'll probably show. And you probably saw them in pictures uh, in the opening sequence. So we're going to resist that. So, well, there it is. Uh, can't wait to dig into it. But before we do crack it open and have a look at the sprues, uh, why don't we have a look at the Tamiya Kubelwagen product line to get a sense of the lineage and the family tree. 
As always, we'd like to thank www.scalemates.com for their amazing compendium of kit reviews. It's been a, a measurable help to us. Uh, it's a great resource for dating and kits tooling, and if you want to follow the different box versions that a manufacturer has released of a particular subject, then that's the place to go. So our kit dates back uh, to, to me, the original release of the Kuba Wagon in the 1970s, if you can believe that. They released it as the PKW K1 Type 82 Kuba Wagon German Volkswagen Jeep. Kit MM106, sometimes identified as 3506 or 3506. You can still find that on eBay for about 25 to 35 bucks. Uh, they re released it in the 80s, says here under PKW K1 Type 82 Kubel Wagon, kit number MM106 300. I'm assuming that's a differentiate uh, from the 70s original version. Sometimes identified this one here as 3506 as well. It says here it has a new box, but I cannot tell the difference between those two. Then we're going to come up to 1997, that's going to be our kit, the Kubel Wagon uh, Type 82. And that's a new tool that shares nothing of the older kit. And uh, it's become the basis for the future versions that we'll look at in a moment. That's kit 35213 and again um, released in 1997. That was followed a couple years later by the German Kubelwagen Type 82 Africa Corps, kit 35238, 1999. And uh, that has one sprue that it shares with 35213, but then there's two new sprues. Of course, you get the balloon wheels, you get Africa uh, Corps figure, and you've got a different hood and some other sundry items. Uh, that was followed, uh, well, they took a little bit of a break, it looks like, here for seven years, and then they released German Kubelwagen Type 82 Africa Corps with the Rommel Field Command Post version kit 89649 uh, and that uh, particular kit does come with uh, a tent a couple africa core figures a rommel figure a crate radio jerry can and uh, just basically the same kubel wagon as that uh, 35238 and uh, that kit number again if i forgot to mention 89649 for that rommel one 2006 then we're going to come forward to 2008 uh, to me a release Kubel Wagon Type 82 with German Field Military Police Kit 89750. I'm assuming that's just going to be 35213 with some military police figures. Uh, fall 2009 German Kubel Wagon Type 82 Ramp K Parachute Brigade uh, Kit 35304. That's a desertized Type 82. Uh, probably shares heavily with 35238. And that um, 35304, that's a de desertized Type 82 with five theme specific figures. So I'm assuming that's the parachute brigade figures. Probably like depicted on the cover, I would say. And then finally, uh, brings us to 2012. Says here the kit was updated and has new parts, which makes sense. And that's that World War II Russian commanders and staff car set. Comes with four figures. I'm assuming that is a commandeered or captured German vehicle that uh, the Red Army has merely put to good use there. And I'm assuming those four figures are going to be the Russian figures. And that's uh, kit 25153. And again, 2012 um, says here the kit was updated and has new parts. So that's your Tamiya 135th scale kit lineage for the Type 82 Kubel Wagon. So, okay, the moment of truth. We're going to crack the box open and have a look. So I'm just going to relive a moment here when I first opened it. Obviously, I've had a look inside, but uh, here it goes. So... What we found inside was some instructions, which we'll look at in a moment. And basically we've got two sprues and decals that went flying, but the carpet monster is not gonna get those. I'm gonna get those. So we're just gonna set this aside. Let me just grab those decals. Ooh, oh, okay, there we go. And to our utter, utter relief, everything was in pretty good shape. So let's see if I can arrange this nicely here. So instruction booklet, we've got two sprues, a loose, uh, looks like a chassis there. We've got a little bit there, and there's our little decal sheet, which we can just about sneak in there. So let's have a look at everything one at a time here real quick. And thank goodness, although the box was in rough shape and not shrunk wrap, everything came intact. So that was a great relief. So there's the instructions. Typical Tamiya. This one's black and white. Some of the newer kits that they're releasing now do have full color, at least paint schemes. But this one's all in black and white. But what I like about it is it actually opens up logically. And the size is manageable. It's very clear line drawings. Everything is very, very well laid out. And I mean, it's a Tamiya kit. You know exactly what you're going to uh, expect. It's going to basically be a shake and bake kit, right? You just uh, take the parts off the sprues, throw them in a bag, shake them up, and out comes a finished kit. It's that good. 
So no problems there. And to me, it really always strikes a great balance between sort of price, level of detail, and level of complexity. So it's they tend to be a little bit lighter builds, a little bit oversimplified. Some, you know, more advanced modelers and purists like to build uh, some of the premium kits, but you can always rely on to me. And for this Type 82 Kubel, it's a great base. So little uh, write-up usually they give you and this actually reminded me that this particular uh, vehicle does actually have torsion bar suspension and they actually mentioned that in here so I had remembered that but um, it's been a long time since I built it so uh, there it is there and they give you in different languages of course so first page usually has a little bit of safety instructions and they've got a color call out list here and it's all to me it paints which makes sense very good quality paints so it's 13 steps and some of them don't really constitute steps they're very simplified which i like easy to follow that's great for beginners great for guys like me too so sometimes the dragon instructions are so convoluted and they try to jam so much into one little page that it makes it ridiculous but this is always very clear so step one is basically the undercarriage we've got torsion bar front suspension and we've got the undercarriage sort of underbody shield here and that was really the secret to the cobalt wagon interestingly enough it was not a four-wheel drive vehicle unlike the willys jeep part of its success was the fact that it could glide over a lot of the obstacles so this is what uh, i think the shield had an integral part in that uh, some of the drivetrain going in some of the understructure we've got some uh, exhaust there which we'll we look at those are solid by the way but not a big deal and we've got the bottom of the engine but the kit does not come with an engine but there's a great aftermarket addition uh, that we'll look at in the aftermarket section so and then we've got some detailing here on the hood we're putting in the uh, gas tank it looks like here and then the towing clevises is up front there uh, let's see here step two we're putting in rear quarter panels firewall we've got the steering column pedals going in emergency brake uh, sorry parking brake and st uh, stick shift and actually these are all pretty pretty good in terms of to scale so there'll be not a lot of work to make those look good the only complicating feature I find here and uh, we'll talk about that later on in the build is um is the steering column we'll get back to that in a moment because uh, just when they bring the steering wheel that's when i'll talk about it so okay so step three we're putting the body together a couple parts here to remove the hood going down got these inside liners for the compartment here and the top of the engine compartment there then we're bringing the uh, top body together with the chassis here so that's uh, see that's a step but it's very simple laid out, very sequential. Uh, because we're going to be doing a lot of pre-painting, we're gonna be kind of building this a little bit differently, but we'll look at that a little bit later. All right, so moving on to step five, we've got the rear bumper going down here. It's just comprised of one, two, three, four parts, very simple. Uh, here are the seats and the seat mounts are going in. The seats have a little bit of an issue that we'll look at in a moment. And this is just what I want to talk about here is normally I like to leave the steering wheel out until I put the figure in, which means it's very, very late in the build because you got to paint the figure and all the rest of it just to make sure you can actually fit the guy in there. I remember the Tamiya Universal Carrier, the build order, if you built the vehicle and try to get the figure in, you couldn't do it. You had to kind of build around the figure, get him in early. So I always look to put the steering wheel in later, but it's very, very hard to do properly and so we'll have to be careful in that step so get back to step six we've got uh, some of the painting on the sort of simplified dashboard very utilitarian dashboard in the uh, Kubel wagon we're actually going to use decals for that I've got a little decal set we'll look at uh, this little bulkhead piece I've never figured out what this thing was I always thought it was the cover for the roof but the roof goes on top of it so I'm not quite sure what that piece there does uh, you've got your running lights there your hood for the engine compartment going down there sadly no engine in this kit but you can get an aftermarket as a Tamiya kit actually comes with a figure and some tools and a little table actually a great little kit we'll look at that a little bit later uh, the rear bumper going on your license plate mount there step seven uh, we've got the trunk door there we've got the rear seats and the front seats going down in the spare wheel very simple steps right this is a kit you could probably build in a weekend if you really pushed it okay so some of the wheel assemblies we'll talk about some of the issues with the wheels uh, once we get to the sprues this assembly is kind of nice because of course you don't have to mask the rear but it'd be nice if it was like that on the front but it's not sadly so you still have to mask those wheels when you paint them or you can always hand paint the wheels too so step eight uh, wheel assembly wheels uh, mating to the chassis you got this undercarriage here shield 
going down. Step nine, we've got the no tex and the Bosch lights going together, as well as a little clear piece for the windshield and the windshield wiper motors right there. Very simple construction there. Okay, step 10, we're just uh, applying the doors here as well as the gun mounts there. Uh, we're attaching the headlights, the shovel, and the horn. Step 11, we're attaching the mirrors. And sadly, there's no mylar in, there, mylar in this kit like some of the Tamiya car kits. So a little dab of silver paint will do us good there. Or we might even, you know, hole punch a uh, piece of mylar there. We'll see. Uh, and you've got the, uh, the sort of the accordion style roof, folding roof pieces on the other side as well as the roof. It's a solid piece, but with a little bit of painting, we'll make that look nice. And we're attaching here, and we've got an option. We could put the windshield up or down. Now, it doesn't have a canvas cover, unfortunately, for the windshield. Of course, there's aftermarket. The kit has been around so long, and it's pretty much ubiquitous, so there's tons of aftermarket. But we're going to build it right out of the box, uh, just because, you know, that's the best way to probably illustrate the kit. So here we're painting up our figure. It's got all color callouts here for the Tamiya colors, which is no problem. And they actually show you a step to insert the figure now. You know, I gotta ask myself if they didn't illustrate that, would I forget to put the figure in? Little arrow going in there. So okay, I mean I'll take simple more than complex any day. And our final step is just basically the door, and they give you kind of this top view, which is kind of handy to have, so you get the angle right. So that's kind of nice. All right, and finally, unfortunately, black and white color schemes. We've got uh, three different color schemes in the instructions, plus the one on the box. The first one is the Sturmgeschütz Brigade 667 France Summer 1944 Deployment. That's just the uh, Dunkel Gelb Yellow with uh, some green sort of tiger striping on it, which is rather nice. Uh, because it's a tiny vehicle, if you're going to spray that, you're going to need a, a pretty steady hand and get your, um, you know, your brush up very close to get those fine lines. But I uh, don't think we're going to be doing that for this build. So down here we've got our Panzer Propaganda Company 697. That's Dunkelgelb yellow with brown striping on it. And that's in Russia deployment, 1943 to 1944, I guess, to kind of match those step colors. And then finally, just uh, the Leichtschanz Division, 999 Italy, 1943, and that's just straight Dunkel Gelb. And they also show you the decals, which we'll look at in a moment. And they've got these tiny, tiny little decals there on the fenders that uh, you really have to take some care. And, of course, your, uh, your unit um, insignias, as well as your license plate options there. So... In an order form that's only good in uh, Japan, apparently. So you cannot order any extra parts from Tamiya. And that'll do it for the instructions. Very straightforward, very clear, very easy to follow. Typical Tamiya kit. Okay, so let's look at uh, our first sprue here. A typical Tamiya staples, which I know a lot of people aren't crazy about. New York kits now have resealable bags, but whatever. This will work. Okay, so let's get that guy out of there. All right, so as always, it's to me a plastic, very good quality, excellent moldings on the parts, and I'm just going to try to zoom in or focus here for you guys so you can see some of the details. Okay, so starting over here, we've got some of the petals, and they're very nice, not too thick, nicely to scale, sort of both sides. Yeah, there's the mirrors, unfortunately, no, uh, no mylar, so a little dab of silver paint will do us there. Those are the um, the gun mounts, a little oversimplified. That's supposed to be actually strapping, and there's supposed to be some rollers in there. But, you know, 135th scale still looks great. Everything is sharp. There's no flash. Very good molding for 1997. There's some of your uh, towing clevises. There is the uh, rear sort of towing bar, if you will. There's the windshield mount, one of the hatches, there's the drivetrain, the shield, there's the gas tank. And the gas tank, actually, if I can get up close, it's got some stamps on it. There we go. So that's kind of nice. But that it, the Kubel Wagon design is weird because that gas tank is right over the lap of the uh, passenger. I don't know if that's my favorite place to put a gas tank. But very good molding. You can see absolutely superb. And there you can see the horn, the detail on the on the horn there is very nice too. It's a no tech light. So excellent detail. Now that might be an issue because that 
they're expecting you to paint and we often as modders like uh, especially airplane guys we usually scrape those flat but uh, with a little bit of decal and some you know microsol or micro set i should be able to get it to lay down there pretty nice but the detail is nice it's actually superb and you can kind of dry brush that as well and get the details so that's kind of nice let me see if i can see the mold dates on here anywhere yeah, there we go. Just to prove it's 1997. Where are we here? There we go. 1997 mold. So, not slide molded, but it looks good. There's the steering wheel. It's nicely in scale. It's not too thick. Sometimes they uh, mold them a little thick, some of the kit manufacturers, but that one's not bad. There is a bit of a seam line, which is to be expected on some of the round parts, but it's pretty good. So you can just barely see it there. So that's going to need a little bit of cleanup. Um, now, unfortunately, uh, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, the clamps are actually molded on, and they're not bad. So I'm kind of waving this in front of the camera here, so stick with me. So they're not bad. They're not great, but they're not bad. Okay, so what else can we look at here? Okay, and this is one of our first problems. If I could catch this just right. On the back of these seats... Normally the knockouts on a lot of these sprues are thought out very well so they're hidden. But on the back of these seats, right there you can see it, there's four knockout pins and it's in a really bad spot. And that's really hard to clean. You're going to have to obliterate those cross pieces which are normally springs uh, in real life or the, on the real thing. Or kind of strip steel with springs on the edges. But if you want to try to clean that up, you're going to have to obliterate those, unfortunately, and uh, reassemble them. So that's one little knock on those seats. Um, otherwise, the figure, while lifelike, uh, it's not bad. It's typical Tamiya. It's not bad. You know, the detail on the guy is pretty good. There it is there. So it's not too bad. Okay, what else can we look at here? That's that torsion bar suspension. There it is there. It's quite nice. And then the accordion uh, sort of roof supports. They're, they're very nice. They take a really nice wash. So very nice on that. So that'll do it for that sprue. So that's how that one looks. Now what else was in that bag? Okay, and it's just the plastic windshield. I'm actually not going to take it out of the bag because I don't want to scuff it up but it's just a little plastic piece works fine you can dip it in uh, you know some clear or some sort of clear acrylic or something to really give it some shine yeah just a clear acrylic piece it fits nicely into that uh, into that um, frame for the windshield so all right so that does that so this other bag's got the second sprue in it as well as the uh, chassis so let's have a look at that you want to be careful when you rip these bags open so you don't break anything. Okay, there we go. Let's have a look at the chassis first. So one beef about the chassis is that these um, these uh, wooden slats are molded onto it. And I know some of the other premium brands, sometimes those come separate. And the reason they're nice when they're separate is they're a little bit easier to paint. So those are already molded on there. Um, just looking at them closely they don't have any wood detail unfortunately so you'll have to paint that but uh, we're going to experiment a little bit with dinging up these fenders there's a kind of a technique I'm, I'm wanting to try on this so we'll look at that in our build but chassis is very nice very crisply molded two-sided the undercarriage is nice or the under part here so and that engine detail is quite nice too so no problems there Okay, and on this sprue, you get your tires. Now, you see, I like the way they're molded on the back. See, the back slips in there, so you don't have to mask it, but it would have been nice had they done that on the front. Now, the other thing is no valves, no valve stems. So for purists, although the detail is, is quite nice, very crisp, I got a little bit of a scuff there, but uh, it's not bad. And, of course, there's so much aftermarket. I mean, this kit is just like been around for so long and it's just available everywhere that there's a lot of aftermarket so a lot of people do make nice resin tires for it now this is one of the drawbacks is first off the connection point on the tires is not the greatest now they do kind of have a notch there but um, 
you know, it's not like it's going to get handled roughly, but if you kind of ding it when you're moving it or something, it's not the biggest connection point on the, on the wheels. So, and the other thing is the way that mounts is it's it's hard to pose turned, and that's the big thing now is you don't want to have straight tires on the front, right? It's kind of hard to do with this. Uh, not impossible, of course, but a little bit extra work. So it is kind of a little bit hard to pose. It doesn't give you that option of the wheels turning. So. And there's the front hood, details excellent. A little simplified with the clips, but not too bad. Of course, the doors look really good. Now, one of the knocks on the doors is that the handles are solid, you can see there. So if you really want to get nitpicky, you could replace those. I don't know. What we usually do with these builds is go out of the box. I think that's the best way to illustrate, you know, what you're getting basically when you buy it. But you can doll it up with aftermarket, so parts are nice. Uh, and as I said, the knockouts are placed smartly, so they're hidden when you build it. So, but great detail. It's that those lines are going to take a really nice wash. And uh, you know, if you look really closely, the detail is very nice. I mean, you've got those. Um, if you could see them, the hinges. The hinge detail is very nice. You know, for a twenty-five dollar kit. It's absolutely fantastic, and the detail there is just great. That takes a wash. Those are the vents, the air intakes uh, for the engine compartment. Very nice. Okay, and then here we've got the mufflers, and if I could focus in on the ends there, you can see that they're solid. Now, not the end of the world. You just get your you get your smallest pin vise you can and a steady hand and you hollow those out and I had uh, good luck on the other cobalt wagon I built so no problem there kind of looks hollow I think because of the shadow but they're solid I mean the slide mold apart like that would be impractical so but uh, again the detail is just superb that's a spare tire very nice and if nothing else the kit makes an absolutely great base for you know clagging aftermarket parts on it so absolutely superb very well engineered, very easy to put together. So okay, so there's that sprue. And what else have we looked at? So let's have a look at the decal sheet finally. Tiny, tiny little decal sheet. And unfortunately it is missing uh the the um the dashboard decal. Sometimes to me it puts in a black and white one for certain vehicles but unfortunately none are included in this one so let me just focus in on that decal sheet tiny little sheet no Balkenkreuz just uh, different unit markings you've got different license plates there that little uh, instruction sort of the, goes on the side of the door that looks great when you got the microsol on it because of the little uh, ridges on the door so you can make that uh, that decal there this little square one here adhere nicely to that door and we've got some uh, aftermarket decals for the dashboard um, instrumentation I've got a little set for Kobo wagon sl uh, slash swim wagon so we're gonna use that for this kit so that's that and the other little plastic piece there we are gonna leave in the bag because we don't want to lose it so so a quick overview basically how some of the subsidiary kits uh, work is normally Normally these parts here, sorry we're out of focus, we'll get in focus, there we go. So usually these parts here, the chassis and these sprues up to there, they're pretty much in all the Kubel Wagon kits, including the DAC versions. And the DAC versions only depart in, I think what they probably do is give you separate sprues here and here, there's a break here and here. And then normally for the DAC versions you'd get the uh, balloon wheels here and a slightly different hood. And then, of course, you get the DAC figures. So these are common to all the Tamiya kits after 97, uh, with the exception of maybe the Rommel one, because I'm not exactly sure that what that Rommel one has in it. But generally, those sprues are common to everything. And then what makes uh, the DAC versions, you get these two little parts down here that are different. So, so that covers the sprues. And like I said, very simple kit, few parts, no problem at all. And no engine, unfortunately, but it is purchase. You can purchase it as a separate kit. Uh, and what else do we have here? That about covers it. So, 
you know, good parts about it, it's a great engineered kit. Yeah, the molding's superb. Clear instructions and the part count is a good balance, not too complicated. Uh, at the price point, probably the best base model available. Some of the Dragon kits run as much as $35, which, you know, hey, they've got more parts, more details. Oftentimes there are different variants, so I get that. But for the price point, you can't beat this. Uh, the kit is available everywhere. It's absolutely ubiquitous, very easy to get a hold of, so that's nice too. And you do get the three uh, markings for three different units. Tons of aftermarket if you want to do something a little bit different. And finally, uh, it does come with a figure. So, and the figure's not bad. So, that's a good overview. Now, drag. Um, sorry, to me, is not the only Koopa Wagon uh, kit on the block. Obviously, tons of other brands uh, do the Koopa Wagon subject matter: Hasagawa, Dragon, Italeri, Hero, Heller, Rubicon model, Cyber Hobbies, and I'm sure I'm not mentioning some. All make Koopa Wagons. They come in different scales. Hasagawa's got the 124th. Uh, I think to me, it's got the 116th scale. If you want something really big which is a beautiful kit by the way. So just a wonderful layout and I can't wait to dig into this guy. And we're gonna do that uh, in the next part of the video. But for now, let's have a quick look at some of the aftermarket parts available for this as well as some resources for our build and then we'll wrap it up. So for our resources and aftermarket, I thought it might be kind of fun to do a bit of a web crawl. So for us old hands, we know that it does start with the internet, but for you new people and for you younger modelers, first stop before you build a project, it's internet time. So quick search just for books on Amazon, uh, tons of them. So excellent place to start. And uh, yes, kids, good news is they do have a Hanes teardown right there. So that's there for you. Uh, you know, we are so lucky as modelers to live in the internet age because just a quick Google search or Bing search and thousands of pictures and we can sit here and get lost and study these uh, photos for inspiration and ideas and color schemes and unit markings and all kinds of other things. So that's the next stop. Uh, now there is one resources maybe or one resource that uh, maybe even you old hands aren't aware of but I found it and it's fantastic. Just search something to the effect of Kubelwagen Humber and I'll put the link below but I found it on Samba.com when you click on that and you click on this you get this magnificent uh, document here. What it appears to be is an engineering report uh, presumably commissioned by the British War Department in 1943 and it's an engineering report based on a teardown of a Kubel wagon I guess a captured Kubel wagon 82 and uh, you also sort of get this executive summary here at the beginning it's kind of interesting to read it now there's a typo but uh, this is what their finding says is looking at the general picture we do not consider that the design represents any special brilliance apart from certain of the detail points and it is suggested that it is not to be regarded as an example of first-class modern design to be copied by the British industry so I mean the whole point of capturing vehicles is to tear them down and find out if there's any technology that is better than yours or that you can use and uh, I guess in their findings they didn't uh, find that the Kubel wagon was anything to write home about so but um, this this particular document is usually used by people that own Kubel wagons, um, people that restore them, and you know, modeling wonks like us want to go into this kind of detail. Look at the engine details, fantastic. Now, the knock on this document is that all the pictures are in black and white, but you are not going to find a more detailed document than this. And actually, if we go up here, and there was kind of a nice page here while well, there's a note tech, but up here, electrical diagram. And there's your instrument panel with the harness and if we look close that uh, gas tank the Tamiya kit is actually those letters there where my mouse is circling the letters are actually recessed in the Tamiya kit whereas actually they look like it's a raised bead so that's kind of interesting be interesting to see if dragon captures that detail correctly but uh, just a fantastic resource there's the battery what else we got here okay I'm kind of wonking out here but stick with me because there's some very cool pictures in here yeah, some of the detailing there and the seats you see I originally thought they were springs now I saw um, kind of a recreated restored vehicle with springs there but it just looked like it's tube steel right across there so I suspect that this is stamped steel 
probably in the text that does explain what the materials are because they're always looking at materials one other issue too is look at the pedals they've got the pimples on them whereas the Tamiya ones don't It'd be interesting to see if some of the premium brands like the dragon uh, are that accurate but anyways if you really want to go overboard with the details that's a good resource that maybe even some of you old dogs aren't familiar with a uh, quick look for that uh, aftermarket engine kit I just did uh, eBay here real quick now you're not gonna find it this cheap these other ones here if we look at more complete list I mean there's some ridiculous eBay prices for that aftermarket as seventy dollars and forty three cents I free shipping well thank you very much I don't know about that one however just clicking on this one to get a sense of what that little kit's got in it uh, it's got the mechanic the engine looks like a gas can I'm not gonna mention it all there's various and sundries here a scissor jack a block some tools very nice if you could actually pick it up for this price but uh, yeah, that's the uh, engine maintenance kit. And you, this one's uh, quite, you know, um, quite accessible. So not too hard to find that one. Uh, I did my own search on the wheels and Quick Wheels has a very nice set. If we just have a look here, they're absolutely brilliant. Look at the details. No cleanup on that at all. And I think, I, yeah, valve stems and everything. So there you go. Not weighted though, unfortunately. And the uh, Quick Wheel here also does make the wheel masks. So... And of course, no stop would be complete without scale mates. They always give you a really excellent selection of aftermarket um, products here, as well as reviews. Now, the only issue here is that availability and price. But uh, lots of PE sets. There's one from, uh, let's see here, Aber. And uh, there's some just some great stuff available here. Black Dog makes this sort of stowage set, and they've got the canvas cover for the windshield and the spare on the front there. Very nice, and the extra jerry can. We might actually scratch build that for our kit. Well, we'll see if we got some jerry cans kicking around. This is very cool. Blast Models makes this infrared device, they call it, not the greatest name. Secret Weapons, but that thing is very futuristic, very cool. And of course, uh, deaf models, you can always depend on them to come up with some great stuff. Uh, let's see here, they've got this here, Kubel Wagon Balloon Tire Set. That would be for the DAC version, so that wouldn't fit ours. However, look at that, they're weighted. I mean, look at that, just superb. Doesn't get any more fine than that. And their roof is great too. So there are roofs around. I mean, that that is just gorgeous. Fits, looks like it fits like a glove. Now that is for the Tamiya kit specific. Now this is kind of interesting, these mirrors. Remember we were talking about the mirrors when we looked at the sprues. I have not been able to find these. Um, I did find the same brand echelon find details for a different vehicle and it ran about eight bucks. I'm, I'm assuming that's American. So this one might be a little bit hard to find. And what else did I want to show down here? Oh, look at this. Hussar Productions, oh, look at that. Isn't that to die for? Just gorgeous. So you can really doll it up. Now, finally, this Lead Warrior. I'm not familiar with this brand. I don't know how available it's this, but look at this. This is fantastic. The Kubo Wagon Type 155 size 4C. I'm going to mispronounce it, but Schneeketen. It's kind of like the half-track version. I try to find actually wartime pictures of that, and I only found one. So that might have been just a prototype. Very interesting. And then this one here to finish with. Uh, very nice. Again, from Lead Warrior. I don't know the availability or the price. But it's got that really funky uh, Volkswagen hood there and that truck back and that 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 roof. Uh, I could see getting this sometime in the future if I can actually find it. So so there it is. There's your resources and your uh, and your um, aftermarket through our well, famous web crawl. That wraps it up for part one. Please take a moment to subscribe to the channel. It's free, comes with no obligation, and really helps us out. Stay tuned for part two, where we'll bring everything together to produce a beautiful scale model showpiece. Thank you for watching.